Okay, so we finally get to the most important distribution in statistics, which is the normal distribution. And in this video, we're not going to examine the general normal distribution, we're going to examine the standard normal distribution. But the standard normal distribution is a pretty good uh, foundation for working with the general normal distribution. Okay, so the standard normal distribution. And at first, this is going to seem quite unmotivated. Well, actually, maybe I'll say a few words to try and motivate this. Standard normal distribution. Just know, know that this is the most important distribution in all of statistics, so there is a lot of reason for studying it, but I'm just going to give you a brief insight into why this is so important. So let's say uh, we uh, want to work out how tall on average the world is. So we have the Earth here. And we have some people on the Earth, uh, so we have about, I think, is it 7 billion people around that are on the Earth? Now, in principle, what we could do is we could, uh, we could actually go and measure every single uh, person on the planet, and we would get 7 billion heights, and uh, we could add them all up and divide by 7 billion, and we'd get some mean, which is usually given the symbol mu, uh, for that is the actual value that this, the actual mean, this is equal to the actual mean, if you were to do that, uh, actual mean, if you were to do that experiment, and that's called a census. The experiment I just described is a census, where you actually go to every single person and actually collect their data and then take the mean. Uh, so this is called, uh, sometimes called the population mean. Okay, but in reality, are you going to do that? Of course you're not. Uh, instead, what you're going to do is you're going to take a sample. So you'll take a sample. So you might take, uh, let's say, a hundred people. Uh, you'll take a random sample, i.e. you won't go to, you know, a rugby club and um, take the rugby players who are all going to be massive. Uh, you'll take a random sample so that you get, um, so that you get a, um, hopefully, representative, um, you get hopefully a decent representation of the whole population. Uh, you would measure all of them, uh, you'd, uh, you'd obviously then add up all their heights and uh, divide them by 100, and you'd get some statistic um, which you might call x bar. So x bar is called the uh, statistic. It's a statistic. It's a it's a, a statistical mean. So statistical mean. Uh, so it's or you could call it the sample mean. So it's the mean of your sample. But is this going to actually be equal to mu? Well, no. Well, it, it might be, but it's not necessarily going to equal mu. And also, if you took lots of different samples, there are loads of different values of x bar you take. You could take so you could pick a hundred people out of seven billion. Uh, you have to pick a hundred people out of seven billion people. Uh, there are many, many different ways you can do that, and for each one of these, you're going to get a different, a potentially different value of your sample mean. So basically, what we want to know is what is the distribution of this sample mean? We would like to know how likely is it that our sample mean is actually close to our mu. Uh, our mu. So we want to know what is the probability of getting a certain value for x bar. So we want to know what is, th what is the probability is the probability of getting a certain value of getting a certain value for the sample mean. value uh, for the sample mean. And basically there is a uh, theorem called the Central Limit Theorem which states that if your sample is big enough, uh, the distribution that x bar fo follows, the, the probability of getting a certain, the, the uh, so the Central Limit Theorem this is, Central Limit Theorem. And this theorem basically says that if your samples, if you take, if you sample enough people, and if your population is big enough, uh, then uh, this, um, the probability that you will get a certain value of x bar follows a normal distribution, or converges on following a normal distribution, centred at your population mean. So your x bar is going to be some value along here, and the normal distribution is going to be centred at mu. And basically, that's the motivation for why we want to study the normal distribution, why so much effort is put into studying the normal distribution. Okay, so now that I've given you some motivation for where this is all going, and we will eventually prove the central limit theorem, but uh, not today. Um, 
So uh, we're going to see how powerful this distribution is over the course of the next vid uh, uh, over the course of the coming videos. Uh, but for now, uh, all we're going to do is uh, prove some. Well, firstly, we're going to see what is the PDF uh, for the standard normal distribution, uh, and uh, we'll do some basic calculations like what is its expectation value, what is it, what is its variance, and we'll look at its CDF as well. Okay, uh, so uh, the standard normal distribution, this uh, curve that you see, this bell-shaped curve, is the PDF for it. So, uh, what if you had some abstract probability space and you had a random variable mapping it onto uh, onto the real line? So the PDF goes over the whole real line. So you map uh, your abstract probability space onto the real line, and you get a PDF that looks like this. Then what you would say is that x is normally distributed uh, with mean. Uh, well. We're going to firstly look at the standard normal distribution. So in this case, our mean is going to be zero. So we set the mean to be equal to zero. So uh, we center our standard normal distribution around zero. And the variance of the standard normal distribution is going to be one. So all you need to tell me to determine uh, which distribution we're talking about is what the mean is and what the variance is. So the mean tells me where I'm going to center the distribution, the bell-shaped curve at. The variance tells me how spread out it's going to be, i.e. If we look at this one here, this is a bell-shaped curve, well, reasonably bell-shaped, uh, but it's much, it's got a, vari a much smaller variance, it's much more centralised. Okay, uh, so um, without further ado, let's have a look at the PDF for a standard normal distribution. And the PDF, uh, little f of x, looks like some constant times e to the negative x squared over 2. Okay, and we want to like to work out what this sum constant has to be. And the way that we can work out what that sum constant has to be, and firstly, let's just get a feel for why this looks like a bell-shaped curve. Well, firstly, uh, you'll notice that x squared is perfectly symmetric around uh, the x-axis. So we're basically uh, around the y-axis, rather. Uh, so if you put a negative x here, it's the same thing. So f of negative x is going to equal c e to the negative x squared over 2, because when you put negative x into x squared, it'll just give you the same thing, i.e. it's going to be the same thing as f of x. So it's symmetric around the y-axis. Uh, if we put in f of 0, uh, then we get that it's equal to c e to the 0, which is 1, so we get that it's equal to c. So the height of this distribution is going to be c, and we can see that as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you're going to be taking the exponential, uh, the negative exponential of a bigger and bigger number, so it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So you can see that it's going to drop off from either side. So we can see that it looks something like a uh, bell-shaped curve. Okay, uh, so uh, if we want to make sure that it's a PDF, then we need to make sure that the integral between negative infinity and infinity of a little f of x dx is equal to 1. So that is the integral from c e to the negative of c e to the negative x squared over two dx uh, between negative infinity and infinity, which is equal to c times the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared over two uh, dx. And now this integral is not easy to do. Uh, so I'm going to. Uh, Pause the video here, have a think about how you would try and do that. Have a think as to whether you can try and do it with integration by parts, integration by substitution, uh, or by spotting uh, that it's um, the inverse of the chain rule. It is a very, very difficult integral, and uh, it, you can actually prove that it cannot be evaluated in terms of elementary functions. Uh, so basically, you will fail if you try and um, try and find a way of integrating this by parts or by substitution. 